a glorious morning, it's about quarter to nine and um, we're heading for Stones where we're going to do some shopping we're getting low on uh, all provisions we had an interesting afternoon at uh, Wedgwood yesterday had a look around the museum, had a bit of lunch and uh, a walk around the gift shop inevitably so we're back on the water now and we'll probably have an early stay, an early stop today as well. Um, just south of Stone. And we've got a um, flight of uh, locks now coming up at Meaford, which is uh, a couple of miles away I think. So we'll crack on and uh, start doing some looking. There are some nice uh, canal side cottages along this uh, stretch. This is a little row here. And a little bit further on there's a, like a private wharf with a couple of boats in it and a nice property attached to it. on the northern edge of Stone now. We've come down the Meaford flight quite uh, swiftly. The locks, uh, all apart from one, were before us so uh, it didn't take long to come down and they're close together so uh, top to bottom was about half an hour. But there's going to be moored boats now all the way into the middle of stone. Nice working boat.
it's just after five o'clock and we've moored up for the night. We're at Lower Burston, which is a place we've stayed at before. And uh, we're on our own at the moment. Um, it was quite busy in Stone and as we came past Aston Marina there were quite a few boats to in and fro it. But we've not seen too much while we've been here. As I say, it's uh, nearly ten past five, so people are starting to pull in now uh, for the night. So we're happy here. Um, we've had a gentle day, really. We did the first flight of locks above Stone uh, reasonably early this morning uh, before it got too hot. And then we moored up in Stone for probably three hours, got some shopping done and then just uh, sat in the shade till about half past three and then we've uh, come down here at uh, hour and a half's cruise a couple more locks to do with, deal with and uh, so that's it for today I think today's been nine locks so not too uh, strenuous but it, it did get hot about two o'clock so I'm glad we've got most of the locks done by then and um, just the two locks after stone to do um, you know about four o'clock time so yeah all right so we we'll look forward to tomorrow uh, I think the weather's going to uh, hold it's been a glorious day today there's a bit of cloud bubbling up over on the west side but uh, nothing that looks too threatening so uh, I'm going to have a drink now and the wash and clean up and uh, settle down for the night Somebody's knocking at the door. Sunday the 6th of June and the weather's taking a bit of a turn after a glorious day yesterday we've got fine rain murky conditions and uh, doesn't look like uh, it's going to improve according to the forecast so we're just going to have to make the best of it so out comes the waterproofs we've only got four hours cruising today so uh, with a bit of luck we might manage to find a gap in the weather but who knows you just got to keep going so we're just about to make a start we've had a swan come to uh, share breakfast with us he's gone off following another boat now so uh, we're safe <laughs> to come out <laughs> he's a bit aggressive uh, and the more you feed them the more aggressive they seem to get anyway we're just about to set off now it's uh, 25 to 10 we were going to make a nice early start this morning but of course the weather put paid to that idea we've arrived at sand and lock and there's a bit of a queue there was one in when we got here there's one in front of us going down so we're just uh, waiting for uh, everything to uh, proceed. This one's just coming out now. The weather doesn't seem to be improving any, but it, it does ease off and then it starts again. So I think that's going to be uh, 
pretty much how it's going to be most of this day. I think these are novices coming out the lot. So while we're waiting, we'll look at a little cottage at the side of the lot, which is quite pleasant, isn't it? There's a big, uh, oh dear, what's going on? There's a, um, a large house here, Sandon Hall, and I think that is a lodge or something connected with the hall and then the railway line goes past us in front of it and I think they're struggling a bit with this one on top of all that we've had one guy waiting to turn his boat further up behind us and then a load of uh, kayakers came through to add to the uh, congestion they don't uh, show any sign of uh, giving way at all they just think uh, it's their canal doesn't matter how many boats are about uh, how they're manoeuvring they just carry on as if uh, they've got the canal to themselves so the explanation for their manoeuvrability or lack of is they've got something around the prop which uh, having had that I know what it's like you just lose all the steering so they, uh, they're they going to try and pull in and free it. Uh, they're just doing that now, they're just pulling in. Yeah, so it's one of those things that is. It happens. We've arrived at Hoo Mill Lock, just above Great Haywood. Uh, we've not really <laughs> had anything happen of any significance. Apart from one bloke telling me to slow down and I was already on tick over, couldn't go any slower with that. To, putting it into neutral um, the gas has run out <laughs> but fortunately we've got two bottles so I've swapped bottles and we've managed to have a, a hot drink and it has stopped raining at the moment but there's a grey cloud looming I've taken my waterproofs off put my shorts back on that's a sure sign that it's going to start raining and this boat is just about to leave the lock and leave it uh, full for me to go into. We've reached Great A Wood and we've stopped and filled up with water. Um, we've tried to uh, obtain another gas bottle but unfortunately the Anglo Welsh shop is shut. They've gone out on a call out so uh, no idea when he's going to be back. So uh, we'll have to hold that over for another time but we should be able to get gas at a marina or whatever so uh, and at the moment the other bottle is uh, supplying us but I don't know how much is in it that's the problem bypass road bridge over the canal and I'm looking down on the, the Trent and Mersey Canal and we're looking at the Brindley Bank what's known as Brindley Bank and at the end of that before that big willow tree uh, there's the aqueduct that goes over the River Trent and I've just had a walk down there to see if I can get a photograph of uh, the aqueduct from the riverside it's nothing particularly spectacular to be honest but anyway there's two groups of boats moored there just before the aqueduct and we're the front one on the uh, of the three on the left so uh, that's where we are for tonight we're a little bit further than we uh, plan to be 
Um, we were going to stop at Wolseley Bridge, but there was no mooring available, so uh, we had to keep going. So we've shaved about 20 minutes off tomorrow's schedule. Uh, it won't make too much difference. So we, uh, we're north of Rugeley now. So the first thing uh, tomorrow will be to get through Rugeley and head out towards Fradley and Orawas. I'm walking across the aqueduct now. And uh, ahead is the first houses in Rugeley. The canal turns sharp left where that weeping willow is and then runs parallel to the river for probably a mile before it reaches the town centre of uh, Rugeley. So this is the River Trent. And we looked at this when we went uh, on the Colden cruise, but of course we were moving then when I went past this sign. Today I've got the luxury of being able to walk up to it. And that's the story of uh, Christina Collins. And the steps are across the uh, the canal. Just over there. So we'll make our way back to the boat and call it a night.